Hello, and welcome back to Let's Be Nerds. I'm your host, Stephen J, and I am joined by Lizette and Gordon. How are you guys doing today? I'm good, Steve. How are you? Fantastic. Miss Lizette? I'm doing good. Good. I am, uh, I'm pretty excited about today's episode. This is one that's been in the works for a while. Uh, we have a special guest with us today. This is the man who composed the theme song that you hear at the beginning of every episode and at the end of every, ep- every episode. Uh, this is a lifelong friend of mine who I can't wait for you guys to meet and get to know. Bob, how you doing, buddy? Real good, thanks. Well, we're glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here, bud. So you guys know I've been trying to get this episode to happen for a while, but of, of course we are adults with commitments and it's been hard to schedule it, but we are here making it happen. Uh, Bob, I kind of want to kick things off with just you giving us in our, like, cause obviously you and Gordon have not met yet in person. Like we've discussed, you've met Lizette, but it's been a few years. So not to put you on the spot, but why don't you give us a little bit of rundown about who you are and you know, what you do? Well, uh, again, my uh, name is Robert Jacobs. Most people uh, call me Bobby or Bob. Um, and I grew up in the Johnstown area almost my entire life and uh, been playing music for the majority of my life. And uh, where I played in a band uh, fresh out of high school, I did that for 13 years uh, with some great friends of mine. And then uh, Time amicably, amicably uh, took us in all different directions, but uh, now after a couple year hiatus, I'm back and looking to kind of just uh, make my mark uh, in as many different areas in music production as possible. And uh, you certainly have uh, impressed me with the setup that you have going on, and obviously we all fell in love with the theme song when we first heard it. Oh, it's, thank you. It's really kind. I mean, it's got to be interesting for you because, you know, being on the front lines in a band to now, and again, I know nothing about music, so if I use any terminology that's incorrect, obviously correct me. But it's, it almost feels like you're taking on more of a music producer type of role. Would that be a correct statement? Yeah, I think it's uh, probably the best role that kind of fits into my current uh, stage in life, you know, um, having a full-time career uh, in the auto industry and, of course, being a, um, a husband and a, a father and present for both of them, you know, production kind of lends itself to more when I have time. You know, if you're out in, uh, with a band, you know, you're usually going to rehearsal seven, several times a week and it has to fit with everyone's schedules. And then you have gigs in the weekend, which take up big blocks of time. When- hours or sometimes you're you know away for several days you know this music production allows me to work on it you know in the time that i have that's free and um it can be a lot more flexible than than working you know in a band setting absolutely and just because it's forever one of my favorite time periods can we talk a little bit about the band because i told the guy like i told lizette and gordon a little bit about it but do you want to give us a little rundown on dub missive yeah yeah so uh, i started dub missive uh which is a play on words uh for dubbing of course is like recording but it's also a type of reggae music which uh, i'll get into in just a little bit and then also uh, taking that dub with submissive and basically meant giving into the sound. Uh, started that band uh, back in 2000 uh, with a very good friend of mine. His name is Joe Sell. And, uh, you know, we got a drummer and uh, started playing the local uh, high school talent shows. That's where we got our first gigs. And it kind of just... Uh, naturally grew from there um as as we went to college we started playing our college campus uh, penn state altoona and then um i left college to actually pursue the band even harder and that's when we started playing you know basically anywhere that would have us you know fire halls uh, to dive bars to college campuses uh, house parties basements and anything in between and um we were really focused heavily on writing our own music. We didn't really uh, try to get into playing covers, 
you know, we were just really focused on, on making our sound and putting it out there in the world. As a, an attendee and uh, sometimes roadie for a few of these uh, events, I was a big fan. Uh, I remember, I believe it was the first time that I saw you guys in a larger setting. I want to say you guys played a pretty popular festival here in Johnstown. It's changed names over the course of the years, but I believe it was the Flood City Music Festival. Was that- that's, that's right. Yeah, it was the Flood City Music Festival. And... Um, that was in 2008 or nine. And that was actually the first show of uh, what became our first, uh, what I would consider national run where, you know, that tour uh, took us from Johnstown um, as far West as Denver, Colorado and all the way back. Wow. I, I just still can't get over that. I mean, you're living the on the road band life. Yeah. You know, and it was amazing. Um, I can't really describe it in, in any other way other than probably the most free feeling you can ever imagine. Because when you're out there, there is no rules. It's just you and the people you're with, you know, and, you know, it might seem like all sex, drugs and rock and roll, but you actually have to survive and keep each other, you know, focused and healthy and, and being able to get to the next city to play the next gig on time play your best, make as good of connections, make sure you don't get stiffed at the door, uh, you know, sell mm-hmm. merch, it, all this. It, you, really, uh, you really have to be disciplined when you're out there on the road. It makes sense. It's, it's essentially like taking your business and your livelihood on the road. I mean, you have to make your profits and make sure that you have, because, you know, it'd be one thing if you had some big financial backing, but you guys did this truly independently self-sufficiently and that, that's that's wild it was wild man it, it was uh it was a great time in fact the best of times uh you know i always look back in that period with with really fond memories absolutely so before we get into i mean i guess it's safe to say that you are a music nerd, as I might put it. We're going to get into the other things that you're interested in because you have quite a range of interests and in, in things that you can speak on in regards to the topics we cover on this show. But before we do that, I want to just quickly, can you tell us, because obviously we know that you do amazing theme songs, but can you tell us a little bit about the new project that you're sort of formulating i know that it's maybe not 100 percent off the ground maybe we could just get a little hint about what's to come well um right now uh, i have two areas of focus that i'm working on is one is is music production for hire and that can be anything from just you know singular guitar parts for for a specific song to you know uh, a full production of a song for somebody that needs a piece uh for whatever uh project they're working on uh, to, you know, theme songs, of course, and uh, jingles. So I'm out there trying to, uh, you know, get some attention with that. But I'm also, uh, you know, working on my own personal music project, again, with uh, Joe, who I was in Dubmissive with, and that is called The Titans of Summer. And uh, we're really looking forward to getting that out. Uh, we're in the demo process now putting together some songs and I hope that we will start to be able to show some people uh, this new project uh, early in uh, 2022. Excellent. We, I hope I don't want to speak for my cast members, but I am hoping that we will get early access and maybe, you know, we'll be able to talk about it here as that project develops. You know, uh, certainly uh, I, I think you guys can get some, uh, sneak peeks insider knowledge of of what's going on but i'm really excited to show it to you i I think it's it's going to be my best work so far excellent now just for the listeners if anybody is out there looking for a jingle or anything the best place for people to contact or find you for that type of thing right now would be instagram out on instagram at bobby underscore specter is that correct that's correct excellent uh, he will be, and he will, for pretty much every episode we release, he will be linked. So if you are in the market for a jingle, a theme song, anything of that nature, please 
hit Bob up because he does amazing work. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I mean, uh, that was pretty, and I mean, we do take things pretty seriously. Like when we decide on different things, it's got to go through, you know, a few channels with, within our little group here to like get approved. But Gordon, back me up when I say this, that theme song, like we were expecting that we were going to have to listen to like three or four and vote on it. But that first one was exactly what we described, right? Oh yeah. I don't think I got to uh, 20 seconds before I said, yeah, this, this is it. This is good. I, it was amazing we to don't hear it because I have no whatsoever musical talent. So just to be able to like verbalize what we're looking for in the first one, be like, encapsulating of everything that I couldn't really like properly verbalize in like technical terms, so to speak. That was a pretty, that was pretty cool. Um, well, go ahead. you know, um, again, when, when you had um, asked me to submit uh, my idea, I, I was instantly excited uh, at the prospect of this because, you know, um, growing up, I was a fan of, you know, for lack of a better term, or, or endearingly, um, all things nerdy. You know, I loved uh, video games and sci-fi and and all those things. And just the premise of this podcast alone excited me. And, you know, when you're excited, you usually can have a pretty inspired moment. So I kind of, after our initial conversation, I just kind of sat down and... Uh, opened up my computer and I just kind of had this, it just kind of came to me where I wanted to kind of have little um, nods to all the things I thought that you might touch on. But also at the same time, I wanted to have a little bit of swagger, a little bit of attitude, almost like if you were playing a video game and it would be the music that you would uh, hear while you're fighting a mini boss. Exactly. You that know? Is, yes. I can and see that. Um, it was it was so fun to make, and it was just one of those moments. And it doesn't happen um, as much as you like to think, but it did come together very quickly. You know, I probably had you know the general premise of the song down in about twenty five minutes. Now that's to me that's is, again no music talent here, so like that's just mind boggling to me that like you can take. I mean, it was through text messages. It wasn't even, you know, you weren't here at the house or I wasn't seeing you in person. It was just through texts that you just, you got it. And it was just, I don't know. I was, I was like, wait, hold, hold on. There's, because I figured we would have this whole drawn out thing and like vote on different ones. And can you do this and rearrange that? <laughs> and no, it was like the easiest part of launching this podcast. <laughs> um, was that we, do you have any input for Bob? Like, I mean, I know you're, um, you're a musical person, especially when it comes to one thing you put me on earlier is like music related to video games, like that Kingdom Hearts soundtrack. I, I actually did want to tell you I really enjoyed the theme song. Um, when Thank you. I, when I first listened to the first episode of the podcast before Stephen had, or when Stephen had just invited me on, and when it started playing, I was like, that is not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> your boy got something professional <laughs> yeah i was like wow this actually sounds like we might be uh we might be doing something here <laughs> i'm a real boy i'm a real podcast <laughs> yes. yes it was it was amazing it was, it was really cool to just hit the ground running with something like that because it's this whole thing is just i feel like it's you're constantly building and trying to like be better than you were the last week and Bob, we can't, I cannot thank you enough for that contribution. And we look forward to like having you come back here and there and like share updates and be a part of discussions. Cause you yourself, like you said, you do fall into some fandoms. Would you like to touch on like, you know, what was the first thing that was what you would call nerdy that really like sparked your interest? Oh man. I mean, that goes back, you know, a really long, <laughs> a really long time ago. Um, you know, I was uh, really big in, like, my first movies that I can ever remember just being completely obsessed with and, you know, watched them, you know, on the VHS. Now I am dating myself there. Um, <laughs> many, many times was, you know, the first, uh, well, all, all the Back to the Future movies um, were just really pivotal for me and really kind of set the tone for everything. I mean, it was, you know sci-fi it was comedy 
you know, it was rock and roll. It was coolness. Like I just remember really just wanting to be Marty McFly and everything <laughs> that he embodied. And, uh, Here's I'm like, oh. I think I did it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and it doesn't matter how many times I see those movies, it still makes me feel the same way. And, um, and that's a true classic to me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, then from there it was, you know, the original three Indiana Jones loved those. Mm-hmm. And, uh, then it carried over to Ghostbusters, um, one and two, and then it was the cartoons and, um, you know, and speaking of cartoons, and I watched X Men and Spider Man and, and uh, the original Batman uh, cartoons, and of course, then that led to the Batman movies. And uh, oh, let's not forget, um, as a product of the '80s, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yes. massive fan. Yes. Um, you know those uh, those first three movies were amazing, and of course, the cartoon was great at the time too. And uh, you know, it just carried on from that. I think you guys get a feel for where I'm at, and of course, you know. Star Wars was in there mm-hmm. and uh you know Jurassic Park massive massive for me so I I didn't really have like a, a set genre per se mm-hmm. but you know anything that's uh you know mystical or fantastic or or just flat out cool can it just be that can we just agree that like, something is just freaking cool <laughs> yes absolutely and you the thing that you touched on is it's it's so many things that have just been, they've gone on to become pop culture staples in their own right. You know, Back to the Future, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Min, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it's things like that. You just, they're kind of irreplaceable. And I'm, I'm with you. It's like, that's, that's what it was. That had to be like so incredible to like, and again, I don't mean any disrespect when I say this, but you kind of grew up in that that era of like that stuff was at the forefront and now for me like i I remember watching like i got to know back to the future through mike he was the one who first showed me that right right so like it's cool how it kept going and it like lived on as like a legacy absolutely and uh you know what i enjoy the most now about those every all the movies that I've, i've pretty much mentioned i like to go back now and i watch them uh, with my wife or, or by myself. And I like to basically like read like the IMDB notes about, did you know, and and things like that, or, uh, just hop on YouTube. I spend an inordinate amount of time on YouTube, you know, like watching the stories behind these movies because they're just as fascinating as the movies themselves sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't know if anyone knows this, feel free to, to speak up, but, you know, uh, Michael J. Fox was not the first Marty McFly cast. Mm-hmm. Okay. I did not know this. Yeah, um, yeah, they had they had uh, another guy cast. Now I can't remember his name, so please call it out if uh, if you know it. I can't. I it escapes can, me right now. I can do a real quick Google search because I don't remember for sure either. But give me one second, I'll get it for you. So they they originally wanted Michael to do it. But he was on a really popular show um, at the time, and they they just couldn't get the schedules to line up. So they cast this other guy, and they you know start production, but he just wasn't you know there wasn't the chemistry on set. There wasn't they don't they didn't feel you know like he was portraying the true um, essence of Marty McFly. Mm-hmm. Aaron and they, Stoltz. Okay. That's who I'm coming up with. So. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, finally they, they let that guy go and uh, they worked it out with Michael's people that they, you know, he could shoot his TV show in the day and then he would go straight from that, you know, get ready and shoot Back to the Future all night. And he did that for however long it took to make the movies. Wow. I and did rest, not know that. And the rest is history. <laughs> I guess pun intended. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> Um, and just a little side note, I became a Michael J. Fox fan, obviously, because of the movies. But the show that was this, I'm assuming, was the scheduling conflict was a show called Family Ties. That's right. Yes. And I love that era of sitcom, if you will. And that show is 
still an icon to this day. If you have not seen Family Ties, I highly recommend it. It's great, you know, because back at that time, it was all about the writing. You know, it wasn't necessarily like shock value or, you know, cheap like layups of like, you know, raunchy jokes or anything like that. It was just, it was just clever writing. Yes. It wasn't the um, carbon copy stuff that you see now in that genre where it's every character character seems like they're interchangeable. It's they lean very heavily on their talent, on their writing team. Yeah. It was just a better era of TV in my opinion. And, and just what a massive talent again, just to kind of touch back on Michael J. Fox. And, you know, he, he was, he's the kind of guy that no matter what medium you're watching him in, you instantly like this person, this character Mm-hmm. and what he brings to the screen and you know he's very relatable it doesn't seem like you know he's like this mythical creature he just seems like that guy michael that you know mm-hmm. and uh and, or that you want to know or you want to emulate absolutely absolutely <laughs> if my wife was here she would she would tell you <laughs> that uh that michael was one of my my man crushes and i have many it's just you know i i'm okay with this i can accept that <laughs> Facts are facts. Ryan I've, Reynolds. I was going to say, we have to yeah, just Ryan talk Reynolds. about the, tic, the TikTok trend right now that cracks me up because it's true. It's all of the duets of every, like, it's like, it'll be a duet of 50 guys and it'll be like the original video of like, why does everyone, or what's everyone's husband's man crush? And it's just a TikTok duet of like 50 dudes all in unison saying Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I could see that video a million times and I, it kills me because... Hey, Ryan Reynolds, I would say, is like um, of our generation of film star right now, he kind of fits that. Like it's you either want to like know him or emulate him. Like he kind of has that relatability that Michael, like you were describing with Michael J. Fox. Oh, yeah. And it, it's, it's that it factor. And that's the best way to describe it. And, you know, guys like Ryan Reynolds, Michael J. Fox, you know, they, it, it just flows effortlessly from them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just, it's not something that you can really create. It's either you got it or you don't. It's it's truly lightning in a bottle. Absolutely. We do do a lot of celebrity bashing on this podcast, but we will not be bashing Michael J. Fox or Ryan Reynolds in this house. No, I, I would be I would be <laughs> fighting anyone uh, uh, fiercely. <laughs> uh, no, our our most recent celebrity rant and I will bring this up every podcast to the day that I die is the Gal Gadot music video where they sang oh that's I, I'm sorry I gotta let it go that you're right I need to like <laughs> I, I bring this, this is... up every week like a damn egg timer I just go off and I'm like hey remember that Gal Gadot video yeah I need to stop anyway but yeah when, celebr- when, you, when you started mentioning it I'm like maybe it's something different maybe it's not that <laughs> <laughs> I'll just uh I'll just Put it on pause. Every, okay. Everybody know. I, we could just edit the, like the clip from that other episode in, and it's just fine. It should be. Oh, it should be a sound bite, and you could just like hit a button. You're like, do you remember that Gal Gadot podcast TikTok? And just like play, and then I could go get like an iced tea or a beer, and just like chill. <laughs> yeah, that, that's. I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't encourage him, Bob. <laughs> no, but poor Bob did not bring this up. I just, you know, it was like that time. It went, the alarm went off on my phone. I'm more of like a nurturer of creative ideas. Like when I, when I hear something that has something behind it, I, I just want people to go all in on it. <laughs> so, and the longer the joke goes, the more funny it becomes. So remember that. I like that. See, uh. what's that? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, no, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I'm getting off it. I'm letting it go. Um, for now, <laughs> for now, till next week, <laughs> for, or the next segment. Thank you, Bob. I love the way you think. See, I need. I do love a supportive co-host. <clears throat> Are you going to fire me now? No, honey, I can't fire you. Okay. You're, you're in the DNA. Yes. <laughs> you're like the last family member I speak to outside of my parents <laughs> and my brother. God. Um. Uh. So let's get back on track. Um, and I got to stop exposing myself. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about your, and I want to have you and your beautiful, wonderful, badass wife, Carmen on for an episode. Liza, you've met, you've definitely met Carmen as well. Probably a while yes. ago though. Tough, mm-hmm. tough, awesome chick. Like she was iconic. Um, but you guys are really big into conventions and I want to do an episode where you kind of like talk con life to us in the future. 
But yeah. Could you, could you just real briefly to kind of tease that episode, like which cons do you go to? What got you like just a real brief, like, well, I mean, comic cons in general are just the best, you know, it's, it's the place where, you know, fans can really connect with whatever it is that they're into them. I mean, again, we, we, we're all on this podcast for the same reasons because these type of things get inside us they light us up and they move us and that's basically a comic-con is is basically the gathering of people with similar interests and likes and passions and you know nobody has a bad time at comic-con you don't see anyone that's like you know just in a bad mood or just completely unstoked to be there it's all smiles it's all high energy and it's all you know good love and you know getting the chance to maybe meet somebody that was in a film or a show um, that you followed for years. I mean, it can be a really touching personal experience. And um, we have several of those, you know, that, that I could talk about Um, or even just being able to sit in on a panel and hear, you know, the um, actor or actresses uh, thoughts on a particular scene or just an overall feel of a character that you wouldn't get normally just maybe like reading in a magazine or seeing it on a, you know, like an E interview or whatever. I mean, it, it's, it's a more authentic fan experience when you interact with any of those celebrities that go to those cons. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's, what's really special about it. And, you know, uh, steel city con, uh, right in Monroeville, uh, not far from us does an ex what that is, is they do it three times a year. Mm. And they find a way to always get very interesting guests. And uh, actually, I was just talking with Carmen tonight. We're talking about going to the one that they're holding in December. You know, there's going to be people from Walking Dead there, Indiana Jones. There's actually going to be Corey Taylor from Slipknot. I mean, like, what? That's crazy. Wow. Um, you know, so there, there's something for everybody there. Um, oh, Sean Astin too, Stranger Things, or from Encino Man again. If you're a kid of the '80s, uh, you know it, it, it's just wild. Uh, Ryan Hurst from Walking Dead, or what was that other show he was in? Uh, Outsiders, or I think it was Outsiders, uh, and of course Sons of Anarchy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so big, big names, and uh, you know, just stoked to be there. Um, and of course from uh, talking about Ryan Hurst obviously we got to that's when we really started getting into cons was going to uh, the Walker Stalker cons it's a con that no longer uh, exists the company that uh, put on that con uh, um, but it really uh, it was at its height at the time that the Walking Dead was probably at its biggest uh, point commercially as well too so the, those cons were just massive and talk about energy it was like pulsating uh through those convention halls yeah i i have to say i used to be a firm believer in that expression like never meet your heroes and then and like relating that i mean i wouldn't consider but some celebrities you just resonate with and you connect with and then i heard you like you and carmen and actually joe and melissa i believe would go with you guys and you'd come back and you'd have these amazing stories of meeting these people and you're like they were just as incredible as you could even imagine, if not more. And it kind of changed my mind on that front. Like that may be an old stigma, like don't meet your heroes, but these people are still real people and they can be just as cool. And it can be such a, like a, a unique personal experience. Yeah. Um, I, I know that saying um, I've been really, I wouldn't say privileged, lucky to have met a lot of people that I look up to in uh, both in music and, you know, film and TV. Uh, And I've seldomly been disappointed. Um, Maybe I just got lucky, uh, you know, but there's only been two that I was like, eh, okay. You know, maybe that wasn't a, as good of an encounter as I hoped for, but usually everybody um, is stoked to be there. Um, You know, they know that these are their fans. This is exactly the reason why they're in the place that they are and uh you know they're they're into it and um you know especially too uh you kind of learn as you go along 
um, at these cons on how to talk to these to these stars. You know, um, if you hit them with the normal small talk, or just like you know, you just gush to them. I mean, they'll they'll be grateful and they'll say nice things to her. But if you can like figure out a question that they might not hear, you know, all the time, that's when you can spark a real conversation. And then, you know, it goes really anywhere after that. And you can really uh, rack up some good face time with these stars. Yeah. It's, it's almost like it's, it's not only a special interaction for you at that point, it's special to like, they're going to remember that because it was unique to that for them as well. Absolutely. And like, uh, and you can really tell at times, like, um, I don't know if anyone on this podcast knows who Ross Marquand is. Um, I uh, do. Does not sound familiar to me. Walking uh, Dead, right? He's in Walking Dead, but he also played uh, Red Skull in uh, Endgame. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Well, um, so we've met him a couple times, and, uh, you know, we've gotten to a point where at the end of the conversation, he was like, you know, hey, can I take a picture with you guys? You know, and he took a picture of us for him. Like he asked for it. Yeah. You know, and like it, it was just like a, a really genuine uh, conversation. And you could tell like it was refreshing to him because, you know, it's person after person after person with seemingly the same comments. Again, not that they're unsincere or like the have anything good to say. They're saying what they feel. But again, if you, um, treat them as a person like if i was talking to any of you guys you know you're going to get them to open up more and again you also break the the redundancy of small talk for lack of a better term yeah no that makes sense i i and i think that's a good guide to anybody that's listening that you know because for me i i've always wanted to attend these types of things and have these but i always had this anxiety and this nervousness about meeting uh, somebody that I idolized or whatever you, whatever term you want to use. So I think that's a good tip for people that maybe have that form of anxiety where they want to go and maybe they're going to go alone or they're going to just have to do it, but they're too scared and they don't know how the interaction is going to go. I think that's, that's pretty solid advice. It is. And believe me, um, being starstruck is real, you know? Um, but the nice thing is, especially if it's, uh, uh, you know, while you're waiting in line, you kind of have time to build yourself up, or, you know, or put your feet back on the ground before you get up there to so you're not just, uh, you know, kind of grunting or, or staring longingly, you know, into their <laughs> eyes. But, yes. uh, you know, it, it, it's good. And, and one uh, Comic Con's a great experience, one that should be experienced with friends, like a group of friends, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's easily one of my favorite things to do. And it doesn't matter how old I get. Well, I think that uh, in the future there might be need to be a Let's Be Nerds podcast team trip to a Comic Con. Maybe that'll be our first vlog for YouTube. I, I think it would be good field research. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I've I've been to a few down here in Delaware, but they were very small, and I don't know if it was just the time of day I went, but we didn't really have that many guests it was just kind of vendors and people dressed up okay. so i would definitely be interested in coming out for a bigger event somewhere gordon could you handle being in public long enough to go to a convention i've never been to one so i couldn't tell you well i uh i had a little bit of a situation where i was very much in love with this celebrity throughout my childhood and they went to still city comic con and I think I made the wrong choice uh, because I ended up not going. Um, It was a little bit devastating, but there is a little bit of a silver lining to that story. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to hear from our sponsor. And when we come back, I'm going to unload my trauma about how I almost got to meet the love of my life, but I chickened out in the end. Stay tuned. Hey there, guys and gals. I hope you are enjoying this episode of the Speak Easily podcast. I know I had a lot of fun recording it. Speaking of, have you ever thought about making your own podcast? It's always been something I wanted to do, but I kept putting it off because I could never find the right platform to host it. That is, until I discovered Anchor. 
Anchor is an all-in-one recording, editing, and hosting app that makes the process simple. And the best part is it's totally free. And I mean genuinely free. And if you're someone like me who has a love-hate relationship with editing audio, let me tell you this. I was blown away by how user-friendly the in-app editing tool actually is. My favorite part, I must admit, is the distribution. Normally with new podcasts, you have to submit your show to various platforms individually, which can be time-consuming and very frustrating. But with Anchor, they do the legwork for you. They'll submit it to Spotify, Apple, CastBox, Google, and several others with just the click of a button. Plus, unlike other platforms, there is no minimum requirement for listeners. So you can monetize your podcast and start earning right away. So, download the free Anchor app available in the App Store or on the Google Play Store, or do what I did and head over to anchor.fm to get started today. Thank you, Anchor, for sponsoring this podcast. I guess this means the next round's on you. I'll drink to that. So, yes, I was just Denise Richards. If you do not know who this beautiful human is, she was in Starship Troopers. She was a Bond girl in The World Is Not Enough. And she was also in Wild Things, which is like a really scandalous movie at the time. Anyway, she it, went it's, a, it's a very important movie for a young man. <laughs> Thank you for understanding where I'm coming from. It's part of every young man's development. Correct. Um, I'm scared now. I want to go watch it then. What's it called? Again? It's it's called I forgot. Wild Things. Okay. Um, anyway, so I've been a big fan for uh, since I realized that I was no, I was becoming from a young man to a, a, a young boy to a man. So you, you just, were blossoming. Yes. Uh, let's put it this way. <laughs> that's, I think that's the most PG way you can say that, Gordon. I don't know what else you want me to say. Um, so anyway, she was. Just, say it at all. I have to like you know like make the effect known. I don't know. We have to um, set the tone. We it's it's very important. Thank you, Bob. Gordon, look out! Watch your job security. Um, mm, <laughs> so, sure. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's a, God. Don't get all salty. Anyway, whose availability is better? <laughs> Did you just throw shade at our guest hosts and why is that? Anyway, enough of you. Anyway, still CityCon was um, happening and I really wanted to go, but I, it was like a work conflict. And then I, ha- I ended up getting the Saturday afternoon where I would have been able to make it out there. Granted, the weather was a little sketchy and I, I was all geared up. I was like, I had Denise was holding court so to speak where you could meet her and take photos and do all of that i had everything loaded up on my phone to buy it and i got my car and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna do it and i just i was like well i'm just like let's just see and i like drove over the mountain and i was like what are you gonna say to her like what are you gonna how are you gonna tell her the blossoming story <laughs> like <laughs> that's not gonna go well she's gonna call security he's gonna be six times bigger than you and he's gonna beat the shit out of you for being like a predator and I chickened out and I regret it because she joined a very shitty below her level reality show recently, like after that. And I Instagram DM'd her and I said, Denise, I get that it's a paycheck, but you are a beautiful <coughs> woman. And these are horrible women that you're going on this show with and it's trash. And she heart reacted. And I'm like, it wasn't the same as meeting her in person, but I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, I could have like met her and maybe like we could have followed each other on Instagram and like I could have, you know, she has like a husband and like three kids and she's very happy and she's, you know, like, but, you know, in my head, I could have had this fulfillment of like in another universe, Denise Richards and I could have gotten married. But I I mean, (laughs) she's like, you know, she's got like kids and like she has this one and it's just the most enduring story. Like she adopted this child that has special needs and I could just stay at home and, and be, I'm pretty good with that type of thing. I could be a stay at home dad now. And like, she could, right go on. Do, she could go do her soaps and I could like, you know, give her feet rubs. Like it was all played out in my head and I just <laughs> chickened out. And for those of you listening, don't chicken out because you could be Denise Richards's sugar baby or whatever. So. 
You know, I, I feel that, Steve, and I do. Um, I think it's important to note that uh, in an infinite universe, there are infinite possibilities. So anything that uh, you could imagine could be happening right now. So why am a very I good chance. This- but that well, why am happen. I in this timeline? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to explain this to me. No, <laughs> we're not going to have an ex- existential crisis on the podcast. But yeah, I already just... gave you guys too many of those last night during our conversation. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, we don't need to have the whole breakdown. But all I'm saying is, I think that what you really like hit home, Bob, is the importance of don't stress yourself out about these meetings. Like you know, make it something organic and memorable and. I don't know if I would have probably had this conversation prior to that. I think I would have, you know, not had the stress and the anxiety level. And I probably would have not gotten up to the table and blurted out something embarrassing. It would have been an actual organic, like truly you are a beautiful person and like whatever the case may be. And I think our listeners can benefit from that. So heck yeah. 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 Um, You know, and anytime, like again, like going with friends, also helps you with the support you need to, to be able to, you know, stand in front of somebody that means so much to you. And uh, that's why, again, Comic-Con is best experienced with friends. Absolutely. So with that being said, convention wise, that's great. What, um, what else do we want to talk on? Like Bob, you had mentioned that you were kind of into video games at certain points. Like we're pretty big into that. Well, I, I'm formerly, big into it i'm kind of they make fun of me because i'm a little out of the loop on some some things now but what video games brought you into nerddom well i mean i started uh my career on nes so you know you have super mario franchise duck hunt excite bike you know like all that stuff from nes and then i went through all the systems so i mean you name it i've probably played those games you know from the late 80s you know through the 90s and uh all the way up through playstation and then by that time once i turned about 16 um got a got a car started playing guitar i stopped playing games as much and you know i was focusing on some other things and it wasn't uh but i always kept coming back to games whenever i had a chance um you know up until like right now i'm not probably playing anything that anyone would consider that fun you know i play a lot of first person shooters um i will shred the hell out of uh tony hawk pro skater any day anytime anywhere um you've all been put on notice skate three i'll fight you in skate three right now what's skate three is that the third i think that's the right name isn't it I mean, that's fine. I've never played Skate, but, you know, probably going to have a run for your money. Mm, we'll see. I'm here for this. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the kind of stuff I'm into. Um, I also like survival horror games, even though I'm a, I'm a big baby when it comes to those. Like, I get all freaked out, and uh, it's hard for me to finish it, them. <laughs> that's what makes it fun, though, is when you get scared, but... I can't really speak because I make my husband play so that I can watch. <laughs> so. I get that. Yeah. Does does Carmen have to play, Bob? I'm not no shade, but does Carmen have to play? <laughs> uh, no, she. But she's there for moral support. <laughs> and like, and laugh. I was gonna say, in all honesty, like in a zombie apocalypse, I would definitely want her on my team. So, that's oh, cool. yeah. yeah. Um. I do remember this from childhood, and I don't know if you'll remember this, but I'm super bummed out because you and my brother, backstory, how Bob and I became best friends is Bob and my brother graduated together. They were best friends. Bob was around and, you know, hanging out at the house and stuff. And then when my brother got deployed overseas and during his time in the military, Bob like super stepped in and was like there instead of... I don't want to say it instead of, but in the stead of my brother, just, just taking just, me just, to concerts and making me feel like I still had a, like, you know what I mean? It was a beautiful thing. Um, but I do remember before that all went down, you, you guys had gotten a copy of resident evil for the PC. Mm. And you guys I think it play- was, I think it was PlayStation actually. You think? Okay. Yeah. Cause I thought I had, um, I think I know where the story is going, but please continue. 
I just remember I see I vaguely remember it being here at the house because I was too young and even though I was only viewing it, it was determined that I was too young and too frightened to be able to sit and like hang out with you guys and play the video game <laughs> because I was one giant scaredy cat and I think it was like my parents were basically like, Yeah, let them just like do their thing and you can just go like watch cartoons. But I remember you being super cool about it and being like don't be upset, buddy. Like, it's just, we, you know, no one wants you to get all freaked out. <laughs> but I do remember that. I don't know if it's if it's exactly accurate, but I have a memory of you guys. I, I do remember that. Uh, you know, I was trying to make you not feel uh, as left out uh, as you were feeling in that moment. But uh, truth be told, then after you went to go do your stuff, we proceeded to get completely freaked out. And uh, if, if Mike were here um, with us today, he would talk about how we were um, had our character going down this one random hallway and one of those liquors from Resident Evil dropped mm-hmm. from the ce- ceiling. And it was like 3.15 in the morning. We were like all tired, eyes are glazed over, and we both literally lost our shit when it dropped down on us. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, so um, believe me, even though we were ordered new, uh, we were easily as freaked out. Well, thank you. It makes me feel better. (laughs) Uh, So that is one thing. Um, Video games tie us together. Uh, There's a lot of like, there's a lot of different ways you can be a nerd. And I like that this podcast kind of explores that. I, uh, I don't think we've ever really done this, but like, what is the one thing? And this is a question for each of you. We're going to go around. Lizette, you're going to start us off because obviously ladies go first. What is like the one absolute thing above all else? Because we kind of hit on everything tonight. Video games, everything. What's the one thing that you, no matter what, you will drop everything and you'll have a nerd fest about it? It could be anything under the sun. Books. Yeah? Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I'll go through my stages where I might not be reading as much, but I'm still a little book dragon. I have my my hoard here. I'm constantly adding to my piles of books, even though I might not be reading them. So, Okay. That's like your go-to nerddom. If you had one choice, that's what it would be. Yep. Cool. Gordon? Um, hmm. I'm not, no, I'm not quite sure, honestly. Um, I do like to nerd out pretty much over anything and everything I can. Uh, probably video games I had to choose, just in general. Nothing really specific, but... like If you had one thing that you could be nerdy about for the rest of your life, it would be video games. Well, yeah, there's all different kinds of video games. That's a good answer. I like that. It gives you a little bit of space for different things there's I like that. food video games there's horror video games strategy there's a whole bunch of video games i That's can't tell if he's giving this answer because he's hoping that when drew listens to this episode it makes him like him even more i'm not sure i do think that every episode is like mildly a ploy to like get your husband to leave you for Gordon. i just want him to buy me a computer as well okay <laughs> i want to buy my own So, Bob, to give you a little insight, we're kind of doing a similar thing that we did with Lizette and her husband, Drew. Like, Lizette came on first, Drew came on a few episodes later, got introduced to, like, the Let's Be Nerds universe, giving us a lot of credit with that one. Right on. Uh, Love it. So we're um, kind of doing the same structure for Carmen, you know. So (laughs) needless to say, when Drew came on, uh, Gordon and him... Well, Gordon developed a man crush. <laughs> it's, you know, I would imagine he's probably in the league of Ryan Reynolds, Michael J. Fox. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Can't beat it. There was, it was really constructive, though, because I'm pretty sure this is no secret to anyone that's going to listen to that episode that hasn't been released yet. But they went on a computer discussion versus like building your own computer versus buying store bought. And it gave Lizette a really, and I a really good opportunity to plan our other show that we're developing. <laughs> <laughs> and no kidding, Bob, I come back from like, I don't think, I, I think one of us, I just come back and at some random point to do their commercial lead. And I'm like, yeah, so buying or building PCs is the way to go. And the whole episode, Drew was telling everyone how like, don't build a PC. 
<laughs> it's uh, it was mildly embarrassing, but very funny. <laughs> So, yeah, we definitely added the fact that we were sitting off to the side messaging each other in our personal chat about the other show that we're working on. That's yeah. where like video split screens um, become comedic gold. Yes, you know you could have had, you know had one frame of, of those two talking. Meanwhile, you guys are are planning and and uh, you know making your notes and things like that. That would have been awesome. I know it would have been a really good one to video record because we were just. Everybody was kind of just doing their own thing and vibing, and it, you know, it <laughs> worked out. So, Bob, what is your one thing? And I think you probably know the answer, but what is the one thing that you would nerd out about forever, and that would be your thing? Well, I could totally hit you up with um, the easy answer, which is music, and that's all things: just listening to music, consuming music, um, or writing it and producing it and stuff like that. That's that's what you expect me to say, right? Exactly. But um, I'm going to tell you about something I've been getting into recently um, that I'm quite nerdy about. And um, I have this thing where I'm on a quest to collect authentic replicas of movie props. And, uh, you know, I just, I feel like, you know, when we talk about these movies um, that, you know, light us up, there's some really well-made um, high attention to detail props out there. And if you can get your hands on one of these, you bring a little bit of that magic into your home. And every time that you look at it in your house, it gives you a smile. Oh. And uh, so that's what I'm into right now. And uh, I just got one a few months ago and it is a replica from the Indiana Jones series, um, specifically The Last Crusade, and it is a replica of Professor Henry Jones, uh, Sean Connery, Mm -hmm. the picture he had in his house uh, when young Indiana was coming in bringing the cross of Coronado, if anyone's with me, following me. Mm Yes, I am. Okay. Um, It's that um, picture of the leap of faith from the lion's head. It is a recreation of, of that picture in frame oh wow hmm. okay and cool. uh and i love it and uh that just kind of has me like constantly scanning looking for for different things like that there's there's a few more indiana jones props i would like to get to kind of keep those together um the last crusade is my favorite film of that series mm-hmm. um and, and probably uh favorite movie <clears throat> of all time of any franchise, any genre, it's that's that's the one. Um, so there's a couple more I want to get to that. I've uh, been eyeing up some Jurassic Park ones because there's some really cool ones there. Also, really cool Ghostbusters props out there too. Just okay. to name a few. Well, that's cool. That's like really that's interesting. It's something you don't hear about very often. Huh? Yeah, I'm into it, man. That's awesome. I can't wait. I, I need to like come over and see some of these. This sounds really cool. Yes, yes, you should. Well, be our first vlog on the uh, on the YouTube channel. I mean, not to be like you know, <laughs> internet fame hungry, but in my head, I'm like immediately like Bob needs to probably show these on his TikTok and on his YouTube channel that he needs to make. Yeah, like, it's I, got, I gotta get into the Tiki Talks. Um, <laughs> you know, oh, I, don't. Oh. oh no, but like your wife is doing, she's killing it on TikTok. Yeah, she um she has uh really kind of carved out her her presence on there and she's assumed this uh role of uh is what she calls the po- uh, pop punk power lifter and uh you know she's really uh driving that home in uh the song she's choosing for the background and her outfits and how she's starting to style her hair and uh of course you know uh, tattoos are blazing mm-hmm. you know she's really like filling this role uh awesome and i i love uh, being on this journey with her, yeah, you know, um, me, I'm like too busy worrying about like what does this song sound like to put things up on TikTok, so mm-hmm. and, and really just get it started. I think you would do incredibly well. I really do. I think you would definitely, definitely, and especially as the music is beginning to take off. I think it's such a weird climate because like I spent like bef- 
before TikTok really got prominent, like I always, I, I like in a weird thing where I always thought that like I missed my opportunity with Vine, and so then there's YouTube, and so like I really tried to like I spent before I launched my YouTube channel, I spent like a year and a half or so just genuinely watching videos and studying like edit cuts and different things, and like I was so obsessed, and then TikTok comes along, and I like. I hit like four, I had a viral ish video of like 10 K views and like, I got like 400 some followers. That's rad. With like, basically, I hate to say it, a lot less effort than what I was putting into YouTube. And, uh, I realized that we live in this era now where it's like, you almost need to figure out a way because TikTok is so fast and such a way to grow rapidly. You need to like, and I, I'm, not practicing what I preach because I have not uploaded to TikTok since June. Well, actually, I did a Let's Be Nerds like little like teaser, but um, TikTok truly has become like the way to get a fast audience and then try to divert them to like whether you want to be an Instagram influencer or you want to do a YouTube or a podcast. It's really become. It's almost like you have to go through TikTok to really build. It it's, is the it is the dominant social media platform. Uh, just the numbers are staggering. You know, it's the most downloaded app in the world right now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, really, if, if content creators aren't shifting their focus um, to having a presence on there, they're going to get left behind. I mean, YouTube is certainly the mainstay. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, TikTok is made for this this um, current phase of the internet where, you know, attention spans are short. So here you have these minute videos where you can just hit them with whatever you got and then they go on to the next. And, uh, and usually in that minute, if you can figure out something that wants them, you know, gets them to come back for more, you got it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you can expand on those ideas on YouTube. This is a conversation for another time. Um, You know, cause I can get really uh, into the weeds with this, but uh yeah, I mean, it's that's where it's at. That would actually be a very interesting podcast where we kind of like lift the lift the veil on that type of stuff and like numbers and like I, I would I think that was uh, maybe is something we need to revisit because like I don't know I would love to actually like talk about that type of stuff because I <laughs> I feel like I'm, I I don't really have a lot of people like I'm only friends with like a very few number of YouTubers that have like larger followings and. It's like it's hard because it's like you, you talk to it's it's weird to like talk to somebody like that that's already kind of made it in a sense. I would I think it'd be interesting to like talk about like our let's be nerds numbers and like TikTok versus YouTube and I think that'd be a really good episode. But I don't know. That's I, and I, circling back to the question I asked. That's like my nerddom now. Is like I am clinically obsessed with YouTube to the point where I need to probably seek help it's uh no (laughs) it's ad nauseum no bob it's bad like i like when i start researching a topic or like i want to make a video about it i'll like you know do my research but then i actually like i get into these like fandoms there is no polite way to say this story (laughs) but i am and gordon can attest to this i am 100 percent obsessed with this woman on youtube and it, the idea is, is I want to do a video kind of reflecting on her shitty decisions and like how she <laughs> she went from being like truly a, a channel devoted to fitness, dieting, healthy eating, healthy eating to a parody of herself. Because when she started to become, I guess what you would consider a troll, the money and the ad revenue and the following came. So she like totally lost sight of what she was doing and it's terrible to say this but she's actually like <clears throat> she went from being a fitness influencer to becoming like housebound and like she let herself get to this point where the money and the views had the exact opposite effect of starting a youtube channel to hold yourself accountable in fitness and when i say i can name every person in her family I watch her live streams every Tuesday and Thursday and it's, it's become this obsession and it's unhealthy because it's like, I, I'm like watching it because and it, and it's easy to make jokes and like, cause you know, fat jokes and whatever are low hanging fruit. It's not that it's, 
I'm genuinely invested in her because if you look at her story arc through YouTube, she started out one way and now she's this complete different person. And I'm always like self-conscious that if, you know, this podcast right now were to blow up and we were to get all of these views, I kind of think I observe these other people and I become obsessed in these different YouTube channels because I never want to like, I think I'm very capable of falling down a rabbit hole of that. And I try to like, in, in like rabbit hole, do you mean like going out and buying like fur coats and very expensive sunglasses or is it more of just like, you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll? I think it's following it, following into that same trap that this Amber Lynn Reed did where she realized that she was putting like for her genre of fitness and health, she realized she was making more money by or getting more attention, getting more influence or whatever you want to say by doing the exact opposite of what she started out to do. And I think I personally am susceptible to like the little green monster, like where I would, it's not about like, it'd be like for the views. It would be like, will I ever, would I get to a point where I would compromise like my morals or my values if I saw that check at the end of the line? Uh, yeah jokes aside i get that um you know and it's actually a common tale you know a lot of people you know once they see the avenue they'll they'll you know compromise their original vision and go for you know what's going to ra- rack up the views i get that um you know but uh everyone loves a good comeback too so watch out this girl might you know wake up one day and you know uh, decide that she's going to, you know, get back on, you know, the fitness train and then her views will spike even more. And then, you know, uh, she'll probably be even more popular than she already is now. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, uh, there's an ebb and a flow to everything, especially when you're a content creator, you know, there's going to be peaks and valleys and, uh, you know, with su- success and notoriety there, there's a, a fine line to walk. Mm-hmm. And being true to yourself isn't the easiest thing to do when you have that kind of pressure on you once you realize you have that audience. Mm-hmm. And I, I couldn't imagine. And it's like, it, and I, I went from being like, oh, this is funny to now like I, and again, there's other, this is just the first example that came to mind because there's other YouTubers that like why I'm, this is my fandom or nerddom or whatever you want to call it that I'm equally as invested. I now like care about this, this stranger from Kentucky, but I'm like, I don't want to see her fail anymore. I want to see that comeback story. I'm like, you would, if her, if I were to be in Kentucky and run into her, I'd be like, how's your dog Twinkie? It would be like, I actually have become invested in such in a stranger's life to the point where it's a little gross, <laughs> but I don't know. But that's, but that's, that's, I, it, as it was going to be my exact comment. I mean, that is the world in which we live. That is the culture. You know, um, these people are giving us, you know, views into their lives mm-hmm. for better, for worse. Maybe we shouldn't start the vlog channel, guys. Maybe, maybe we're going to go down a rabbit hole that we don't want open. Yeah, it's okay. Gordon and I will keep you from falling down that rabbit hole. Thank you. I'll try my best. Oh, please. You'd be so guilty of it, too. You'd be like, oh, what do we got to do for that check? Oh, Oh, that's right. He is the instigator. He is the one who told Delaney to shotgun her coffee. Never mind. I will keep you all out of the rabbit hole. And I'm upset that we did not get a video for shotgunning her coffee. See, like, you're already, like, you're already, like, one, like, you're one toe, like, your foot's on the banana peel, Gordon. The second we get a video that does well, you're going to be like, what do we got to do next? (laughs) Anyway. It's all good. I just, I think it's such an interesting topic and maybe that's like a whole podcast in itself is like that culture. Cause it's like nobody else grew up with it. Like we are the first generation to have lived through this. And when you think about it that way, like what are, what are going to be, what's like influencers going to look like in 10 or 20 years. And we could get into that whole thing where they're doing the cyber influencers where they're not even real people. They're designed by companies to promote brands like it's it's like we got all of this technology and all of the stuff overnight and it's just it's scary to think about it all at large i get that did not expect the podcast to go this 
this route, but it's been something that's been on my mind, so it had to come out. <laughs> anyway, I feel like I've been dominating. Gordon, Liza, what do you do you guys have anything for the discourse? Because I feel like I've been totally uh over talking and over sharing. No, I mean you're good. I've been just listening. Like I said, I'm kinda tired today, so this has been a a nice um conversation to listen to. Well, that's good. Hopefully the list the audience agrees. <laughs> Gordon. I uh Yep. <laughs> I'm pulling a blank right now. Are you and Lizette doing the same thing you guys did to, like we did with you and Drew? Like, are you guys planning your spinoff while we're talking? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody gets a spinoff. I'm like Oprah out here. Get, if you have a spinoff idea, get it and make it happen. You get a spinoff. You, <laughs> you get a get spin-off. spinoff. <laughs> oh, my. Um, well, oh, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say, I genuinely cannot remember what I wanted to say, and that's an issue. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's okay, though. I mean, um, Bob, quick question. Uh, do you have Discord, and are you familiar with that app? I do have Discord. Okay. Would you like to join our Let's Be Nerds server? Uh, we talk about upcoming episodes. Um, it's definitely... we're hoping that as the podcast picks up, people that enjoy the show can eventually join, what have you. Um, and we also have a really fun trivia game in there. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to be a part of it. Okay. We definitely do not play that trivia game all day at work. No. No, no that never all. happens. So if you ever... <laughs> and Bob, I, as a former car sales person, I can understand that... When you are going, you are going 90 miles an hour, and then you do have some downtime. Mm-hmm. So if you would like to be in that server, but you know, still obviously actively participating in work, because you know, for anyone listening, we would never encourage anything other than you know, being present at work. But you know, we would love for you to join the server. That well, really- I, I would uh, be happy to be a part of it. Okay. Well, w- when we get off the call, we will drop your, we will get your Discord information, get you a link to the server. And for those of you listening, please uh, consider clicking the link in the description box below because it is a link to the server. We are trying to build a community. That's what this whole podcast is about. It's you're never alone. There's always somebody with a common interest that you can relate to and make friends with. We'd love for you to come hang out with us on there, uh, play trivia with us. Talk to us about your favorite episode. Bully Gordon, that's a huge thing. We just lo- we love Discord. We live through it, and it's very much a part of this podcast. Um, aside from that, I definitely want to thank Anchor for sponsoring this podcast, because without them, it wouldn't be possible. I th- think that's pretty much the end of the episode, Bob. I can't thank you enough for being on. I hope you enjoyed your experience. Oh, I did very much. Just want to thank uh, thank you, Steve and Lizette and Gordon, uh, for being great hosts and uh, you know letting me be a part of this. I, I think what you guys are doing is is truly great. Well, thank oh, thank you. you. That means a lot. And we want you back, and we want Carmen back. We want we want to introduce her to this little universe we got going on because I think she has a lot to say and a lot to contribute to the, the discussions we're trying to have. I I know she's excited to be a part of this, and uh, I think you're going to love her already do but they'll that they will are the audience and these guys it'll be an instant connection i'm sure yeah i definitely remember like the one kind of conversation i had with her was on uh when i came up for your graduation steven and she seemed really cool then so i'm excited to reconnect with her oh that's right i was gonna say it's probably been that long Yep, I can tell you how many years, but I won't out you like that. Yeah, it's my anniversary reunion this weekend. We're not talking about that. Anyway. Mine's next year, so it's fine. (laughs) Well, I love that. that, Like Again, that's the whole goal of this podcast is bringing people together, reconnecting and making new friends and reconnecting with old friends. And I love everything about it. And I guess that's where we're going to leave you for this episode. Um, Check out all of our socials in the description box below. Uh, Give us a like, a rate, and a review. Leave us a comment. Tell us your favorite video game, your favorite movie from like a nostalgic video game that you will always play. Just 
anything we can do, tell us even what we got wrong and what you didn't like about the podcast and how we can do better. We love to hear it all. So with that being said, thank you for listening to Let's Be Nerds, and we will see you in the next one. Let's Be Nerds is hosted and executive produced by Gordon Bryant and me, Stephen J. McLean. Let's Be Nerds is a production of Speakeasy Productions. Our social media manager is Kylie Gregg. Our managing producer and co-host is Lizette Ayala. Today's guest host was Robert Van Jacobs. You can follow him on all social media platforms at Bobby Dub Music. To keep up with the latest on Let's Be Nerds, join our Discord server linked in the description box below. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Be Nerds Pod or find us on Twitter at Let's the Letter B Nerds. Mm-hmm.